Dr. Henderson, again, for another video. This one, we're gonna talk about scar tissue, specifically at the bladder neck. Reasons that you'll see this is if you've had a transurethral section of the prostate or a terp. We see this more often with laser terps. You can see it whenever you've had a prostatectomy and you get the prostate taken out for prostate cancer reasons and they suture it back together. There's many different reasons for that, but what happens is that scar tissue kind of closes down and you have a hard time going to the bathroom. The problem with scar tissue anywhere along the urethra and specifically the bladder neck is I can go in there and I can make incisions. I can try to cut out that scar tissue and resect it. But usually if you've scarred down once, you have a 50% chance of scarring down again. If I go back and I do it a second time, because you scarred down a second time and I just go in and cut out the scar tissue or cut through the scar tissue, you have almost 100% chance you're just gonna scar down again. It's not a very effective thing for us to just keep going back in there and cutting or even doing dilations and things because we can already predict that you're going to scar back down. A new kind of way that they found out how to do this is going on since my residency. I actually helped with some of the research on this but we've found that certain chemotherapies have very good anti-scarring properties or anti-fibroblast properties, which are the little cells in our body that make scar tissue. Before you've seen this probably if you looked into it, um, where they do it in eye surgery, try to prevent scarring in eye surgery. We used to use like steroids and anti-inflammatories, things like that to try to shut down the scarring so it didn't scar as bad. And we found that chemotherapy actually works very well to perform anti-scarring techniques. So with a transurethral incision of the bladder neck, we're still going in there, we're making an incision through the bladder neck, trying not to use a lot of cautery or anything like that because heat is going to promote scarring rather than healing because we want that blood flow and blood supply to come in there. In addition to making those incisions, we actually inject chemotherapy or mitomycin C into those corners where we cut open the scar. So if the scar is a little hole like this, when we cut it open, it looks kind of like a big square like this. Each corner of the square is where I'm going to inject a little bit of this chemotherapy medication. It doesn't have the same side effects as when you're using it for cancer. I personally have never had any patients have any side effects complications from this. And they have a new device that I talk about in a different video called an OptiLoom for the rest of the urethra, where they have the outside of this balloon that blows up and it has this chemotherapy on the outside that prevents anti-scarring. So you're not gonna lose your hair, you're not gonna get sick, you won't even notice that the medicine's in there. But what's nice is after we do this, and it's really like 15 minutes or less in the operating room, it's all transurethral, so you don't notice any incisions or anything, even though we make the four little teeny tiny incisions on the inside. But the worst part about the whole procedure is you wake up with a catheter. Nobody likes the catheter. You keep that in for about five to seven days is the average what studies show works best. And then you come back, get the catheter out in the office. And in two months, I usually do a follow-up cystoscopy. Your urologist, if you go to a different one, may not. But I like to see whether or not it works. We don't have to deal with the same problem again. I have had maybe two or three patients and a lot of them have had radiation for prostate cancer after they've had their prostate taken out those radiation, radiated patients, radiation kills all the blood supply to that area. So it's really hard not for it to scar down. So if I've had to do this a second time, it's only been on those two or three patients and usually the second time works. So it's very, very effective as far as treating a bladder neck contracture, bladder neck scarring, a very good procedure. And again, the worst part about the whole procedure is just having the catheter in. Once the catheter's out, you may have a little blood or irritation in your urethra, but most people are right back to doing whatever they were doing before going to work, you know, their activities, exercising, whatever they want. Great procedure. There's a new type of OptiLoom, um, which is that device I talked about that they are coming out with on the market that's gonna be a stronger balloon to blow open bladder neck scarring. And it's gonna have the anti-scarring chemotherapy medication on the outside. So we won't be doing those incisions anymore. Most likely we'll use that, um, but it's a great way either doing the mitomycin C injections or that balloon once it gets approved of taking care of these bladder neck contractures and helping you go to the bathroom easier.